little thing I've noticed about Eva, she has yawn buttons on the side of her head. So let's just test out your yawn buttons, just right here. Shall we? Oh yeah, right there. There we go. Yawn buttons. Eva, sit down. Let's try out your yawn buttons again. Yeah. Mm. But your, no, just, your ears are better like that. There, wear them like that. Much nicer. Okay, so today we are at Mian Shore. It's a lovely day actually, it's the 5th or 6th of January and it's a little bit chilly but it's a beautiful bright day and so we're just going for a stroll along the shore and as always looking for interesting things we can find along the way. So today I'm looking for a particular shape of stone and I'll show you what I mean in a minute actually we'll have that as well there's a bit of sea glass there nice little bit of polished green sea glass there we'll have that but I'm looking for a particular shape of stone which is not uncommon on these shores but also not all that common when I find one I'll turn the camera back on So this is the sort of thing I'm looking for today, which is just cylindrical flints. And they're quite un unusual, but on this particular beach, not completely uncommon. So um, I'm just going to pick up a bunch of these and take them home because I have an idea for what we can make out of these. I've also just found this rather interesting piece of, I think this is a piece of banded agate here on the beach. It's got some interesting banding inside the the rock there. That's not a fossil, that's just a natural formation, but it's a nice red colour. So I think we'll take that home as well. Okay, so this is what we succeeded in finding today. It's is probably enough for the project I have in mind, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, unfortunately. So you're just going to have to wait and see. But I found this one, which is very interesting because it kind of looks a bit like a shark's tooth, but it's, of course it's not. These are not teeth or bones or anything. These are just pieces of flint. Found one actually that's got a hole all the way through it. These are formed from the silicate remains of sponges millions of years ago. And of course we've got this little piece of banded agate here that, let's see if we can get a good look at that. See those band formations in there. And see if I can maybe take a slice of that or something. And then see what we can make out of that. Okay, now I'm conscious that quite a few times over the last few weeks in videos, I've said, hey, here's a cool thing I may feature in some future video. And then I don't always get back to it. So, um, sorry about that. I have got a couple of big projects, well, not big projects, but long projects on the way both of them to do with carving rocks that I picked up on the beach. Both of them kind of inspired by Bobby Duke Arts. If you haven't visited Bobby Duke Arts channel, strongly recommend a visit over there. I'll put a link in the video description. He's inspired me to have a go at carving stones and things and other materials that I find on the beach. But those projects are still in development at the moment. They're gonna take more than a week to complete. So they are being worked on. And here's a tiny sneak preview of what they are. One of them is an attempt to use barnacle coral and tile to make a pendant. The other one is I'm going to try to drill a ring out of a piece of flint. Both quite ambitious as starter projects. But anyway, let's try something just very quickly. So I've got this piece of banded flint or banded agate or something. Anyway, it's this banded material that we've got that I picked up on the beach today. So I'm just going to try wet cutting this with a diamond wheel using my little rotary tool. I'm just going to try cutting through 
about here so that we can see if those bands do extend all the way through the material, see what it looks like inside. So I've got a tray of water here that I'll keep dipping it in. I've got my little diamond wheel and I've got my rotary tool. Now I'm using electricity near water but this is only a 12 volt tool and it is plugged into a power supply with an RCD so I feel like I'm fairly safe and certainly you're quite safe sitting there. How am I going to do this? I'm going to dunk this in the water and then cut, attempt to cut Just stop and take stock. Well, that's cutting rather well. I've got a little slot appearing there, just on the edge there. Don't know if you can actually see that on the video, but anyway. So I'm just going to crack on, I think, and see how far we get. I think I'll turn the speed up a little bit so that I don't have to keep on dropping out. Okay, so. Okay, here we go. Now, you're going to see this the same time I do. So, oh, that's a slight disappointment. I was, <laughs> I was hoping there were going to be all sorts of pretty bands of colour inside of that rock, but no, it's just plain old red. I mean, it's quite pretty when it's polished, but I was expecting to see bands of white and red inside of there. We'll just smooth off those little nubs and we'll let that dry out in case it just needs to dry out before the pattern can be revealed. So there we are. That was a slight disappointment really. The uh, bands on this material do not go all the way through. It's just kind of rather boring, dull red inside. Never mind. That was an interesting experiment anyway. I picked up these sponge cloths for about a couple of quid in the hardware shop, so I'm going to have a go and see what we can do with these on the laser cutter. They're made of cellulose and cotton, so that should be interesting. So let's have a go at cutting them. Okay, well that's interesting. They were damp when I opened the pack, so I think we better let them dry out before we have a go at doing anything with them. Okay, so we're just going to try cutting a simple star shape out of one of these sponges. See how far we get with that. Okay, we'll just allow that a moment for the smoke to clear, if any. Okay, so let's open it up and see. Has that cut it at all? It has, but I think it needs another pass or two before it's going to go anywhere. I think, actually, I need to dry these out some more before they're going to cut. So, let's go for another two passes. Okay, so that's three passes at 100% power at 300 millimeters per minute. And so, yeah, not really cutting that. And that, I think, is where this material is still slightly damp from where it came out of the packet. So we'll try again when it's dry. Um, not on this video, though. We'll try again when it's dry. It might cut better then. So I guess if you wanted to make some laser-proof gloves, 
This might be the stuff to make them out of. We're going to be trying to use this laser engraver to make some invention dice, which I intend to give away in a future video quite soon now. So I'm sorry this has been a bit of a mishmash of different projects half completed. There are a few things in the pipeline. I hope you'll stick around and wait for those to come out. In the next couple of weeks or so, I've got a couple of nice interesting projects coming up, which are different to a lot of the other things I've already done on Atomic Shrimp. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.